Hey there guys, welcome to Luxlum and GR. Today I'm going to be doing a review on the Krellent V4A uh, Quad uh, AA flashlight. Um, it's the XBL High cool white version. Um, this is light itself right here. Um, there's two things I'm going to point out right now that I do not like about this light before I go into the review, which is obviously the cosmetics right here. Nothing's lined up. Buttons here. But then this uh, hand groove is over here. It should be turned and facing the light. It's our facing the button itself, just so everything's all uniform, or at least put it off to the side right here so everything's uniform in a, in a straight line, you know what I mean? So even with this thing right here, if this was turned to sideways right here, it'd be even better. Um, also, another thing I don't like is the actual tail cap um, where the batteries go in. It also acts as a switch. You can hear it clicking, but, oh, so now it's working. Every once in a while, this will work, and it won't work. So there we go. Now it's working for me. Let me try it again. Turn it to the right, on, left, off, right, on, left, off, right, on, left, off. Now, if you tighten it down too much, it does not work at all the way it's supposed to. See, it just jumps back on again. So there we go. So yes, you have to tighten up to a certain point to where you test out the switch and make sure that uh, it doesn't turn on on you. And also, when you guys are putting the batteries in, in the instructions, I'll show you guys in a minute, it says to put the positive end towards the springs. That you do not want to do. Um, you want to put, obviously, the, um, the negative end towards the springs. And also... If you guys do not have the batteries in here, and you take the batteries out to charge them, and you put the, the cap back on, you can see how my springs are bent. This one's turned this way, and this one's turned that way. Um, when everything's lined up in here, and you put it in the groove like it's supposed to go, the little these little uh, tabs right here, put them in the groove where it's supposed to go. Make sure you backspin it first, and then start tightening it up. So that's one thing I hate about it. And then... This here, while I'm screwing everything together, the light turns on, which is a pain in the butt. I'm not sure if it's just my light that I got. I've had this thing for, so you look at, the switch is not working. So I have to back it off. It's just not working at all. Let's turn that off and see if it works. See, it's just, it's, I'm having, I don't know what it is. It's probably just my, it could be my, uh, my flashlight itself, or it may happen to other, other people's flashlights too, but I have no idea. Anyways, this does have an electronic switch. Um, so if you do leave batteries in here, it will slowly drain the batteries down to nothing. So I would make sure once you guys are done with the light, take the cap off and let it sit like so if you want to, or just take the, uh, the batteries out completely. And that's it because these things will drain down the batteries. I had batteries in here for three weeks that are brand new, freshly charged. I put them in here just to test out the light itself. Left the batteries in for three weeks and they were completely dead when I was uh, coming back to do the review on them. So uh, that's a good thing to do is to take the batteries out or at least take the tail cap off itself. Uh, that way you don't drain the batteries and stuff like that because you may, um, may over discharge your batteries just from this electronic switch. I mean it's very light push button and that's it so you get it in a nice cardboard box nice and thick sturdy cardboard box here comes wrapped up in this piece of plastic right here um, as you can tell the cutout for this is not the same size as this so uh, they just to make multiple lights they probably just throw whatever there whatever this thing fits into and there you go you also get two extra o-rings which are huge a uh, nice thick o-ring so this thing is a uh, Waterproof is pretty good, and you also get a lanyard, which I probably will never use. So, that's it. Then you also get this short and quick uh, user's manual. Um, let's go to the brightness levels here. So with uh, four uh, rechargeable nickel metal hydrate batteries, you will get an hour and 30 minutes of 1,095 lumens. Then also five hours at 430 lumens, and there also is a moonlight in this thing here, but I'll show you guys how to do that in a second, which you'll probably get even more. Um, so with a regular uh, batteries like Duracell, Energizer, stuff like that, 
um, you'll get a thousand lumen or 1,030 lumens for an hour and 20 minutes, and you'll get 350 lumens for four hours and 10 minutes. Uh, has a beam distance of 523 meters. Uh, the candela, which is the peak beam intensity, is 68,382. Uh, one and a half meter drop, impact resistant, and then also one and a half meters underwater. Not sure for how long, but yes. Now, where does it say for here? I'm trying to find out how to operation. Oh, right there. It says install the batteries with the positive terminal towards the spring inside. Do not do that. That's wrong. <laughs> It's supposed to be the negative terminal towards the springs inside or outside, doesn't really matter. So it's the total opposite of what it says in this manual. So that's one thing that they messed up on is right there. Other than that, um, it's pretty much self-explanatory on how to use it. Um, the on-off switch, uh, you can turn the switch or you can use the actual button on top. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, warranty information, blah, blah, blah. Um, so now, to use the light, you simply just press the button, and um, I have it set to where it goes on high first, and then you press it again, and it'll go to low. Um, oh, actually, no, sorry, that goes it's standard at high first, and then low. Um, you can actually switch that if you like. Um, you can, it's got, it's got infinite brightness, so uh, whatever, whatever one you're interfering with, the first mode or the second mode, you just press and hold the button, and it'll slowly start to dim down to a nice like three lumen uh, moonlight version right here, uh, which is perfect for nighttime, anywhere you go. Um, get up at night, you wanna do that. You can always set this thing as your first one if you wanted to, and then jump to the second mode, and then do this completely bright. Once it dims down, it'll start working its way back up, and you can stop it wherever you want. Um, but I like the moonlight mode, I like the full brightness. So full brightness, it starts to flash, that's when you know to stop for full brightness. It's got a nice hot spot in the center right there, a good spill on it. Uh, there's really no artifacts really around it. Eh, a little bit right here, a little bit of spill artifact, but other than that, uh, it's totally fine. It's great. Um, does have a hidden strobe and a hidden SOS to get to the strobe. Uh, you just double press the button, and there you go. That's your strobe. Um, it's actually very uh, disorienting in person, especially at night. Then you double press again for SOS. And you just press the switch again to go back to uh, your first mode, or the last mode you were in. Um, you do have to cycle from one mode to the next. There is no memory, so you have to cycle between those two modes and then turn it off. You can't just go low and then turn off. No, because it goes straight to, to the brightest level, whatever you have it set at. Turn that off. There you go. Um, does not come with an anti-reflective coated lens, but nonetheless, it is a good lens, and... It does have a nice, deep, smooth reflector on this thing with the XPL high in there. Uh, this little light right here throws um, pretty good. I like it. It's a great little thrower for uh, for what it is for a four AAA battery light. I mean, if you trip or not AAA, sorry, AA batteries. Uh, AA batteries are pretty cheap. You can get them for cheap, and uh, for what this thing can can do with just a regular, you know, store bought uh, Energizer Duracell stuff like that, batteries, um, it's pretty impressive. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go outside and we're going to go test this thing out and see how far the beam uh, distance is, show you guys how the momentary works outside, uh, or the infinite brightness momentary, same stuff. Um, like I said, this tail switch, buku, sucks, sucks, not good. Um, also, the threads are greased pretty well. The threads up in here to, to remove this uh, uh, battery tube from the actual uh, head unit. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but it's like a, a sticky glue type that they threaded the, or they put on the threads before they put it back on, which was no need for that because there is an actual that another nice large orange O-ring in here, which uh, seals it pretty tight. So let's uh, let's head outside. Oh, also one more thing. Sorry, the, the finish on this uh, smooth, but kind of like a greasy feeling, kind of slippery feeling, but it fits in your hand good. So that's probably why they gave you the uh, the lanyard, which to you know, hook it on there and then wrap it around your wrist because it is adjustable. Um, which is a good thing, I guess, if you don't want to drop the light. But um, I'm not a big lanyard fan when it comes to... Uh, and this thing does have a little bit of weight to it. So it's probably another reason why they gave you the lanyard. Because of the, the, the smooth finish on this thing here. And uh, the weight of it. You don't want to drop it. But other than that, this little... Other than the little, you know, piddly things I just mentioned that I don't like about the light. Uh, this thing is a great light. Um, 
it's a thrower for sure. Uh, we'll go outside and we'll test it out right. Okay guys, here we are outside. Um, it is a little bit windy, so if the wind takes over my voice, I apologize. But all you really have to do is just watch the beam. Uh, so I'm going to turn it on, which is at a low setting, of course. Like I said, nice low beam. Uh, little throw right there. That tree is 20 yards away. That one there is 25 yards away. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the side of that building, but that side of that building right there is about 70 yards away. Uh, that's on low. Uh, you can't quite see it on that building over there, but you can see it on the sign. Lights that sign up pretty good. Lights those barrels up. That's just on the, uh, I don't know, I'd say about three lumens. Three to five lumens, maybe. Uh, but nonetheless, it actually works out pretty good. So uh, let's go to the uh, next level, which is high. Uh, you can see a nice, smooth flood beam right there with uh, a nice hot spot. So there's those trees again. You can see them, no problem. Uh, there's the side of the building. So it's, like I said, 70 yards there. That building over there you can see is roughly 95 yards to the very edge of it far left edge of that building. Uh, the house that's way over there lighting up in between the uh, that other building, that tree. There's a house back there. It's about 130, 140 yards away. Uh, here's the tower test again. Nice tower test. Goes up there. Lights that tower up pretty good. Uh, you can see the beam in the air right here. Uh, the air is actually pretty dry, so um, it's not just the moisture in there. Uh, there's the side of the building. There's the other building across the street right there. Right over there is probably about 70 yards away. So this thing moves, moves pretty far. Got that tree there. Uh, you got trees right behind that uh, that tower. You got a mushroom top tree right there. If you guys can see the mushroom top tree. Uh, this thing's a nice little thrower. Uh, you guys can see the house over there. That house is 200 yards away. And you guys can probably, I'm not sure if you guys can make up the stop sign, uh, but the stop sign lights up way down there. That's roughly 320 yards away. So, this little thing is, like I said, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a thrower for sure. I mean, the, the beam, the further the beam goes out though, the more wider it gets. Um, it's not very, very, very tight um, the further you go out. But um, nonetheless, it's a great light, especially for uh, being just a four AA light. This thing rocks. Let's walk out here more and see if we can, uh, if I can light anything else up besides just that. And again, I apologize for the wind, but so you can see that house lit right up. That house there is 200 yards away as well. So this little guy rocks. I mean, you can see how just how large the uh, the flood is on this light the further it goes out. Uh, but great light, especially for the money, um, for what it does. Let's try some. Let's try strobe out here. So there's your strobe. There you go. SOS. So I just wish I had a memory, but other than that, it's a great light. Let's go back up. All right, guys, we're back up top. So that is the Crellant V4A uh, in action outside. Uh, like I said, nice beam pattern to it, nice uh, smooth flood, uh, good hot spot. The further the hot spot it goes out, though, the more uh, floody it gets. Uh, the hot spot does, not very tight, but still, uh, for just a you know a, a quad double A battery. Uh, light this thing's pretty dang good so what i will do is um if i can find a uh a link to uh where i purchased that this at uh gear best i will put it in the uh, description below and uh if i can't i apologize um they sometimes disappear and come back on their website all the time so hopefully they have them um but other than that um great light i like it if you guys like the video please give it a thumbs up um, and please subscribe for more. Until the next slide, I'll see you guys later.